What are the factors that affect solubility? In this video, I will go through the terms as well as the factors that affect solubility. One is temperature and it creates these solubility curves. And we'll do some practice problems with solubility curves right here. And we'll go over solubility rules for ionic compounds. And if you'd like to watch another video of mine called solution formation, I go over how molecular polarity affects solubility also. If you'd like a copy of these blank pages, you can go to the YouTube description below. It's part of a larger set of notes that I have for all the solution videos I have on my YouTube channel. So if you'd like a copy of these notes blank, you can go to the YouTube description below. Little shout out to the, the chemistry teacher in my building, got me a brand new Sharpie. I'm excited to use it for this video, but I did type up most of it just to make this as quick as possible. So if you'd like to pause the video and write this down, and then I can talk through it with you. All right, so solubility is the number of grams of solute dissolved the number of grams of solvent. On a solubility curve, it's this axis right here. An unsaturated solution is where we don't have the maximum amount of solute that we could have dissolved with that solvent. And that's gonna be anything underneath the line. So if you focus on lead to nitrate, if you have any numbers below it, below this line, that's unsaturated. Saturated is the maximum amount we can put at a specific temperature in that solvent that we have. So right on this line at different temperatures, this line is the maximum amount of solute I can dissolve at a specific temperature for lead to nitrate. You'll notice though, if I have potassium nitrate, it's completely different. So again, the line here is the saturation value of the number of grams of solute I can have at a specific temperature. You'll notice that most of the time, ionic compounds are more soluble. Next, supersaturated is where we've somehow put more in there, and I have a little demo at the very end of this video to show you. So somehow we put in more than we could have by doing um, a little kind of a lab technique. And they are very unstable solutions, which I hope to show you at the end here. Henry's law is about how pressure affects the solubility of gases. That's why I have this right here. Um, easy definition of Henry's law is if I open up this seltzer water, all of a sudden the carbon dioxide will leave because it's under a lower amount of pressure now. And I can even just pour some out and you'll notice that if I don't have that pressurized anymore, the carbon dioxide will just continually leave um, during this video. So I'm just gonna let you kind of watch that just in case you need a little bit of a bubble therapy, we'll say. All right, first off, the lines represent the mass of the solute we can dissolve, which I went over already. Below that line, it's where you can say it's unsaturated. Remember, you gotta look at each specific line. So if it was sodium nitrate, that's the line it's saturated. Below it is unsaturated. Above it would be super saturated if you could make it. Ionic compounds tend to be more soluble at higher temperatures. And then gases are less soluble. So I'm just gonna draw kind of one gas onto here and that's ammonia gas, and it starts here. And then by the time you get to 90 degrees, it's only soluble by about 10 grams. So I'm just gonna kind of gently kind of add that when it looks like this. And so gases tend to be um, less soluble as temperature goes up, which I think kind of matches with some common sense that you have, hopefully, all right, um, that you kind of just noticed in your life. All right, so let's go over some example problems. So I made a bigger chart here so we can kind of, you know, draw on it and look at it. So it's going to keep that keep that kind of handy. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to answer this problem, which is if we have potassium nitrate, we have 100 grams of water, that's the same as the axes, and we're at 10, what would that be? And it's at a saturated solution. So we're going to say 10 degrees, but, um, and then which one were we going to look at? Potassium nitrate, I almost went to the wrong one, which is right here. And that means 20 grams approximately um, dissolves in that solution. So you just say the answer was 20 grams for that first one, all right? Now remember, that was in 100 grams of water. So what if the question said, what about 200 grams of water, same temperature? So that means we're still here, but this went up so we can dissolve double of that. So kind of do a little math problem here. So if 200 grams... And then I kind of multiply it by the fact that 20 grams could be dissolved in 100 grams. But it's basically going to get me to the answer that this is 40 uh, grams that I can dissolve because I can put in double because I have double the amount of solvent. So I can put in double the amount of solute at that specific temperature. All right, let's move on to a different one. KCL. So you have 30 grams in 100 grams, so it matches the axes, and we're at 30 degrees. Okay, so 30 grams, 30 degrees. I did that on purpose to make this easier. So 30 um, grams, 30 degrees, which is right here. 
And then we're looking at KCL this time, correct? Let's look back, KCL, which is right here. So then that's below the KCL line. It's gonna kind of go like this. So it's below this line. So then this answer would be that this is unsaturated. And all that means is I could fit more sodium, or sorry, not sodium. I could fit more potassium chloride in solution, more solid could dissolve. And in fact, I could dissolve if I want to even check. You could change the problem, how much more could dissolve. Well, it looks like here at this temperature, we could get to right here. So it looks like we could dissolve, that looks like 35 to me. So we could dissolve kind of five more grams, which it could be a whole other type of question, which we could have five more uh, grams of KCL could dissolve. Kind of like that with the next question, 90 grams of sodium nitrate in 100 grams of water, so it matches the axes at 10 degrees. So 10 degrees, 90 grams, and sodium nitrate. So 10 degrees, 90 grams, and sodium nitrate. So it's right there is the dot, or the X kind of marks the spot here. And then this is what can dissolve. So somehow, maybe either we tried to make a super saturated solution, or it's just saturated, and this is the solid that's sitting on the bottom, which is way more likely. So we put in 90 and we can only get to fit. I picked easy numbers for us to do in the video. We can only get in 80. So that means about 10 grams is sitting at the bottom of that beaker. Um, and if you watched my electrolyte, electrolyte solutions video, I kind of did that with my electrolytes. I had probably, you know, saturated and then I had solutions sitting at the bottom or sorry, solids sitting at the bottom at the end. All right, this is just a really quick summary of a larger set of solubility rules, and these again are for ionic compounds. If you'd like the rules for solubility with polar and nonpolar molecules, you'll wanna watch my solution formation video. So if it has an alkali metal or group one, they're typically soluble, or ammonium. If it has nitrate or acetate, it's soluble. And then chlorides, bromides, and iodides, some halide, halide ions are typically soluble, but not with some of these heavier metals, silver, lead, lead two, and mercury um, one. And then sulfates are typically soluble, but not with some of these alkaline earth metals, lead again, and then mercury. So that's just some solubility rules that have predict that it just won't be soluble at all. The other thing, don't forget that gases are less soluble as temperature goes up and as pressure goes um, down. So you're still watching this gas leave. So those are some of the factors. All right, I promised a little super saturated example. I actually have three of these just to see which one of them I can get to kind of go first. So I made a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. So that's what's in here. So sodium acetate, and it is super saturated. So I put more solid in, I heated it carefully, slowed it, or so slowed it, and then cooled it slowly and made it be kind of uh, unstable. So let me see, sometimes if I just pop open the, um, the uh, stopper and kind of bump it, there goes that one, kind of show you how unstable it is. The other thing that's kind of cool, there's another one gonna happen. You can kind of slow the video down with this last one if you'd like, but these are really exothermic. So a lot of heat's coming back out, all the heat that I use to get it to be looking soluble but I uh, super saturated these and there you can see that all the solid comes right back out again. Um, here's a little, what's called seed crystal for this one. It's just a little bit of solid sodium acetate. And there it goes, you can slow mo that down. And again, that one is very exothermic, also a lot of heat. So I'll just kind of prove to you, um, no, there's, oh, I almost smacked them together there. Basically, uh, like they're solid like now because all that solid that I kind of coaxed into that solution by carefully heating it and carefully cooling it, um, I was able to get out by just kind of making it either unstable or by adding what's called a seed crystal. All right, well, I hope that helps chemists and I hope you enjoyed this video as well as other solubility videos I have. So again, if you'd like a copy of these blank notes, you gotta do some of the work yourself here. But if you'd like a copy of these wonderful blank notes, go to the YouTube description below, watch some of the other videos I have on solubility and then those notes will match right up with it. All right, good luck chemists.